Hello, this is Tim Law with Playing It Forward Coaching, always encouraging your self-reliance. If you develop a marketable skill, chase that skill by always going the extra mile with a good work ethic, uh, improve people and communication skills, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish in this country. A big thank you to over 600 people who have subscribed to this channel, Playing It Forward Coaching. If you haven't already, please do so. I'd super appreciate it. I got a guy here that I've known for a long time. We're uh, I'd say strong acquaintances, that kind of thing. And uh, he is uh, the, uh, the the king of the uh, AM talk radio, uh, 910 WSBA from uh, 6 to 9 in the morning. I, I try to catch him as often as I can. And welcome, Gary Sutton. Tell us a little bit about yourself, and uh, we'll take it from there. Well, thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Yeah, I've been on there for about 25 years now. So I'm an old timer, but uh, I taught for 25 years before that. I coached for 41 um, I'm a guy who grew up, grew up first in Ohio and then moved here in about 1960 to the Manchester area, went to Northeastern High School. Mm -hmm. uh, my, da my dad was a the principal there for about 23 years, so I was the only one in my family that could make it through while your dad was still principal. My brother and sister decided because of my experience to go to Central, <laughs> but uh, I, was, uh, I enjoyed my time there with my father and my mother and uh, uh, loved it every minute of it and uh, grew up, uh, never made it past the ninth grade in terms of making the basketball team and but became a basketball coach for 41 years of my life and had a chance to win a couple, uh, a, a state championship, a Keystone mm -hmm. championship, a couple of national championships and uh, a state championship at Columbia in 1987 with the boys double A team. So uh, I've had a lot of uh, good experiences, played golf when I was in college, still play golf to this day, just about every day, and mm -hmm. unless it gets way too cold, but uh, just have a wonderful time and, and doing radio became by kind of by accident. Um, and I've been doing that for, again, 25 years of doing talk shows, but I started doing uh, a color analyst work back in 1988, right after we won the state championship in 87, and uh, was asked to come upstairs at a Millersville game and tell them what I saw, and I did that, and that was about uh, 2,000 games ago. So I still do all the games today on PCN uh, with basketball in March. I've been doing that for close to 30 years now, and I think I hold the record for doing the most state championship games of anybody in Pennsylvania. So not boasting, just – what happens when you stand around for a long time, people eventually will get you <laughs> to do enough games. So that's, that's kind of a thumbnail sketch of where we are. Sure. Sure. Well, we just, uh, we just had uh, Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s uh, uh, birthday this past Monday. Uh, what are your thoughts and reflection regarding the, uh, the great Martin Luther King Jr.? Well, one of the most admired men in my repertoire of people that uh, I can ever think about. I, I just, the courage that he had and the way he went about things, uh, uh, following the the tenets of Gandhi and and people like that and uh, you know peaceful uh, protests uh, you know making a point in a way that I think we need to make more of today uh, and trying to bring people together I think was magnificent of course his I have a dream speech I think is the greatest speech I've ever heard mm -hmm. uh, what what was amazing about that speech was that uh, Mahalia Jackson I think was sitting there in the uh, she had sung that day and she was sitting there and you know he got done with his regular speech and she said hey Martin tell him about the dream. And he went off and the whole high have a dream part was all right off the cuff. Now he had wow. obviously used that before in parts of it, but that was all off the cuff. And of course, that's the part that most people remember today that, you know, I have a dream today. And, but she was sitting there across the way, I think it was Mahalia Jackson. And she just looked over and said, Martin, tell him about the dream. And he went off and what a magnificent speaker. But, you know, the fact was it came from the heart with him. And I think, uh, you know, remember Martin Luther King, forget black and white and all that kind of stuff. The fact that this man stood up for human rights, Mm -hmm. uh, and the rights of all people to be respected equally, I think, really spoke volumes about this man and, and should be well regarded as one of the great heroes of American history. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as I know, you're a, you're a history teacher and I am as well. And uh, so he really had a big impact, you know, not only on you and I, but certainly this country. And, and, and I, I love your idea or the truth about, you know, how he was such a unifier, too. You know, mm -hmm. he, he really brought the. Um, uh, the, the different races together, you know, very, very well, you know, throughout the sixties and beyond. And uh, it, it was just, just magnificent as far as, uh, you know, every, everything, as far as, you know, that he did as far as this country and certainly one of the, one of the uh, pillars and, and one of the all time greats without a doubt. Um, what about uh, Gary? Uh, you've coached a lot. You worked with a lot of young people. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and I know I'm preaching the choir to you. That, that one of the most important things is, is, you know, the life lessons as far as sport is concerned. And as far as some of the life lessons and, and examples that you uh, felt were important for your kids to learn, what were some of the main ones that you would try to, uh, you know, encourage them on? 
Well, a couple things come to mind. First of all, I, I was always a great believer that talent wins games and character wins championships. Mm -hmm. And it's not always just the championship on the court or the field or whatever it might be or the mat. Uh, but it was a championship in terms of who you become as a human being. And so when I taught my kids, I wanted them to be good people. Mm -hmm. I didn't want uh, a student athlete to ever use uh, the field or the mat or the court as a place you can let down. I don't believe that you can go out and be any less than 100% person in life. And when I say that, it doesn't mean you're going to win all the time, mm -hmm. but it means that you got to be 100% as a son or a daughter, 100% as a student, 100% as an employee, 100% as a parishioner, 100% as a friend, and 100% when you reach that court or that mat or that field. And by doing that, you develop character. And I really believe that you'll resort to the thing you practice the most in the most stressful moment of any game uh, or in life. Mm -hmm. And so if you are practicing being a good person all the time, being a good employee all the time, being a good parishioner all the time, being a good player all the time, you're the guy who I want to have the ball in the hands of at the end of the game in the most difficult situation, because chances are uh, you're going to be able to follow through because you've been practicing that the whole way along. I've often had kids come up and say, well, I want to be a great player. And I said, are you a great student? Are you a great person? And, and I, I don't mean that all A's or anything like that. I mean, are you giving it the very best you got every mm -hmm. day and everything you do? And when you do that, to me, you can't, you can't go 60% as a son or daughter. You can't go 40% as a student and then tell, come and tell me you're going to be 100% as a player. It doesn't work like that. Sure. Because you're, you're at some point in time going to cheat in that big moment. And so my philosophy has always been, and this is kind of why I stand by, and it's in my sport of basketball, primarily, although golf is my individual sport, but basketball, <laughs> I'm a great believer that the ball will always find the hands of the least skilled player in the most drastic moment of any game. And it's the character of that player that will determine the outcome for your team. Mm -hmm. And I believe that with all my heart. And I've seen it happen before, uh, especially in a state championship Eastern final, where we had a guy who was probably the worst shooter in the history of basketball, who had one of the greatest <laughs> characters of all time, Mm -hmm. and turned in a winning bucket at the end of the game because that's who he was. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I talk about him. His name was Bo Draper. I uh, played at Columbia High School, and to this day, I still talk to the young man on a regular basis. But, uh, yeah, the ball will always find the hands of the most unskilled player in the most drastic moment of the game, and it's what that person does in that moment that will determine the outcome of your team, and it's all about character at that point. Well, well, well said, Gary. And ironically, I was going to ask you for a special moment, and you were uh... – you were a couple steps ahead of me on that. I, I'm not sure if you have one that can top that or not. That certainly was a great story. Well, it comes back to him. Uh, he's a, a great young man. And, and the moment occurred in 1987. Our team was 3-7 and seven at Christmas time in the Lancaster Lebanon League. And we didn't look like we were going anywhere. We had some pretty good young talent we were trying to put together. But uh, at the beginning of the season, Bo uh, was out for the team. He was a senior. We had a lot of underclassmen who were playing who were really good. And Bo didn't start that year. Well, he quit the team. And um, so I, I talked to him on the phone. I said, hey, don't quit. You know, give me a chance to talk to you tomorrow. But I came in the next day. His uniform was on my desk. So anyway, um, we went on and played a game without him. And uh, a friend of mine, Carl Kreiser, whose father was my mentor, Elmer Kreiser, who was a legend in Columbia. Mm -hmm. Carl came and said, if Bo came back to you, would you put him back on the team? And I said, well, I could put him on in a heartbeat. But he, he quit on his team. And I said, I want that team to have a say about it. So we brought Bo into the office and we had nine guys in there. And basically, I said, we're going to have a vote. And I said, when we vote, uh, I don't want anybody to ask any questions about why anybody voted the way they did. And so we had this vote after everybody talked and uh, it was eight to one. And the one was a young man named Mike Whistler, who ended up being the sixth leading scorer in the history of Pennsylvania. <laughs> and to this day, uh, he and I go to church together from time to time. So um, so immediately, of course, all the other eight guys go, Mike, Mike, why'd you vote that way? I said, wait a second. I said, you couldn't say why. And Mike said, that's OK, coach. And he was a freshman at that time. And of course, Bo was a senior. He said, I'll tell you why I voted that way. And he looked Bo right in the eye and he said, Bo, you're a senior. He said, I'm a freshman. He said, if I can't follow you, who do I follow? Mm -hmm. Well, there were tears in the eyes. So we walked out and I said, Bo. You're never going to quit anything again. If you do, I'll drag you out of your house and, and pull you back up here. Uh, but I said, you now start as last man on our team. You were six. You're now the last man on our team. You have to work your way back up. Mm -hmm. And I said, I, I want you to remember one thing. You never know when your moment's going to come. 
And so we went through the season. Like I said, we were three and seven at Christmas. We had a tough stretch. We started running more laps every day and we got ourselves tougher and we started winning. And all of a sudden we found ourselves at the end of the season playing in the Eastern Championship of Pennsylvania after finishing fourth in our district. Wow. And we're playing the same team that beat us by 12, which was Trinity. And so we're, we're down by four at the end of the game, minute and a half to go. And I put Bo in, who was probably the best defensive player we had. And I also told Bo, never shoot it beyond two feet or he'll be on the bench by the time the ball comes down. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, he was a great kid, really great kid. Uh, just great character every day, great in the classroom, just worked at everything he did 100% all the time. And so we go out, and I said, our guys were coming apart. We called timeout with a minute and a half to go. We're down four in the Eastern Championship, the right to go to the state championship. And basically I said, guys, we've got to, we can't stop loving each other right now. We've gotten to this point with that, and we need a steal really badly. Mm-hmm. Well, Bo goes out, gets a steal, gets it to Mike Whistler, the guy that had voted against him. Mike turns in a three-point play. We're down one. They come down and miss a shot. We come back with 30 seconds to play, run every play we could possibly run, and finally get it to our best shooter at the top of the key. And he lets fly with uh, about a 19-footer with about four seconds to play. First time all year, he missed everything. Air ball. Whose hands are right there ready to grab it? But Bo Draper. Bo grabs the ball, comes up among three guys with a rebound, puts it back in. We win by one. Wow. And wow. we go on to the state championship uh, because of that play. So I go in the locker room after the game, and you talk about great moments. We had gotten to know the Trinity guys. They beat us in the district semis. After the game, there's my Trinity guys and my guys in our locker room paired off together talking about the game. Unbelievable. Just a great moment of sportsmanship mm-hmm. and just seeing these guys really bonding from both teams. And over in the corner sits Bo Draper by himself with his head in his hands, crying his eyes out. He just got carried around the arena. They put the the uh, net around his head, and he was just you know ecstatic. But he's sitting there in the corner crying. And I went over, and I whispered in his ear, you never know when your moment's going to come. That's right. And just walked away. And that was uh, recalling from when he had come back on the team. And you know what? He put his head up and down. And uh, to this day, I think he has in his license place the legend. That's what he's been called over all the years <laughs> in Columbia. Because mm-hmm. in 100 and plus years in Columbia of, of basketball, uh, this is the only state championship they've ever had in basketball. And he was a major part of that. But you ask about a moment, there's a moment for you. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic, Gary. Fantastic, really. Well, this has been wonderful. Uh, any any last second thoughts before we kind of wrap up here? No, I just think that for all of us, whether we're students or adults, you know, we can't afford not to give 100% of ourselves all the time. And looking out for other people, doing the very best we can do, realizing full well that there's going to be days where we're going to fail. But mm-hmm. you know what? If we come back, we try again, we dust ourselves off, we keep on working at it. Character wins championships, talent wins games. Yeah. Talent sporadic, character is all the time. And yeah. we're so lucky to be able to coach and play. and But most importantly, play in the game of life. I think that's what we really look at in the long run. Very well said. Very well said, Gary. Well, this, is, this has been great. Can you hang for a minute or so when we're finished? Sure. Here? Absolutely. Thank you, Tim. Yes, sir.